Let's talk a little bit more about Tony Khan since you brought him up here. A lot of the listeners have been sending in different questions and different clips. Since we talked on the experience about the Twitter spat between Tony Khan and Ariel Hawani, Ariel Hawani has gone on his show, I believe it's the MMA Hour, to discuss this. I have some audio to play for you. Well, now, to bring people up to date, uh, Tony was highly offended that uh, Ariel Hawani appeared in the crowd to do a stand-up in Montreal where, hey, we're here with all of our hometown people. We love Sami Zayn. And Tony was offended by that. He took it personally, and he said that Ariel Hawani was about as much of a real reporter as Tony Schiavone is. And let's remind everybody, Tony Schiavone works for Tony Khan. Uh, and, and so... Uh, Ariel answered back on Twitter, basically saying, hey, calm down, snowman. And, uh, you know, he was obviously not uh, frightened by Tony's outburst. And so now he has responded verbally on his program. This is, now we're up to date, right? Somewhat. I think it's important to note there is a little bit of a history there. Tony was on his show. Tony did not want to answer questions about All Out after... Ariel couldn't get those questions answered. He wanted to know why, couldn't get those questions answered. So there's a history there. And the other thing I want to say before we play this is, some people are saying that Tony thought it was a joke at first. What? That he was joking. But do you see any logic in that? Well, that, what, that Tony thought who was joking? Tony thought he himself, Tony, when he was tweeting Ariel, was joking. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. That's not a, it's not a joke because it wasn't funny. It was <laughs> Barry it was, Shivani. It was yeah. It was a it was a childish clap back, as the kids say, at Ariel Hawani that sideswiped Tony Shivani on the way around the corner. All right. Well, I have some audio here. This is from, I believe it's from the MMA hour. The MMA hour with Ariel Hawani. We have various clips we're going to play. We'll get your comments in between. Let's go to this first one about Ariel seeing the tweet. And I see this fucking tweet from Tony <laughs> Khan. And I swear to God, I looked at it like three times and thought it was fake. <laughs> I thought it was fake because, you know, anyone can have a, a, a blue check, right? Anyone can be verified. Like, there is yeah. no way. This anyone guy doesn't follow me. He's never tweeted me. There is no way that he actually tweeted this. Number one, proving that he was watching. A, which is bizarre. Why would you do that? Why would you put competition <laughs> over and show that you're Good watching point. some random SmackDown and a random moment in the uh, in the telecast? Number two, putting down his own guy in the process. Your guy, GC, the great Tony Schiavone, Atlanta sports legend, calling me a oh, fraud. Oh, let's not go crazy. And then saying that I am as much of a journalist as Tony Schiavone. Now, I'm trying to think, like, what what is the point that he is trying to prove here? He is trying to say that Shivani isn't a journalist, which, by the way, correct me if I'm wrong, GC, as an Atlanta guy, doesn't he kind of have a little bit of respect as, like, a media dude? Like I I never knew Tony Shivani as the wrestling <laughs> guy. That was later told to me. He used to come on the radio in Atlanta, and I was just like, Tony Shivani. And then when I was, like, 16 or 17, that's when I found out it's like, oh, yeah, he's massive in the world of pro wrestling. But he has respect, yeah, right? That. People love him, admire him, right? He's not known as like yeah. a... No! No, <laughs> no, wait, stop it there. Stop let, me, it. let me stop. Nothing against Shivani, but he was just... a Like, it's not like he's some beloved local sportscaster. He's not well, I'm, Dick I'm, Enberg. He's, Come on. He's not Vin Scully. Uh, but at the same time, their poor Ariel should just move on with his point <laughs> instead of trying to b badger and hector and belittle this other fucking guy into... Oh, yeah, Tony... God damn, they carry him down the street at parades every year. He's a fucking beloved, like Mother Teresa. He he turns some loaves into fish or something. Or How about that? The guy Tony Schiavone works for says he's nothing. And the guy that got insulted with him is like building him up bigger than he's ever been built up by anyone ever. He's beloved in Georgia, isn't he? Let's go back to this. He's done Definitely some baseball. Do, I mean, he was always mixed into like Atlanta news radio throughout news radio. my childhood. So this guy's calling me a fraud, and then he's saying Tony Schiavone is as much of a journalist as me. I guess trying to so imply I've, that like he's not a real journalist and I'm not a real journalist. I've had Why time to think about this. insult your own guy in the process? Please go ahead. I've had time to think about this. What he's saying is 
Tony appears on our television show and he is presented as this interviewer. You are now equivalent. You are you are appearing on their television show and you are doing this. But the implication is that neither of you is is journalistically sound. Now he again, he's he's why why take a shot at your own guy? I don't get it. I, it just doesn't make sense. You could have <laughs> said that, that is, in a million different ways, right? That's the comparison. It's like on our show, you're as you're you're equivalent to this level of of interviewing that's happening on our show as well. Is my read on it. All right, let me stop it here for a second, because the next thing he's going to talk about, uh, according to Jace's notes, Ariel saying Tony's still upset about Ariel's criticism of their interview, and Ariel lays it all out. But uh, what do you think of this so well, far? So far, he's laying a bunch of people out. I mean, these are grown adults trying to figure out why that not only this guy was so, Tony Khan was so, too many pronouns, pal, was so upset about this meaningless incident that took place, but also why he chose to confusingly word his insult to malign members of his own company at the same time. Well, you're just as bad as one of the dipshits I'd hire. So that's what I've, that's what every grown adult has heard out of that so far, except for Tony Khan. Maybe my qualifier there was an indication of why he didn't. Well, let's go back to Ariel Hawani after sure. thinking about it. I mean, the, the real thing he should have done was not say anything because, number one, why are you putting over, you know, the, the, the competition's broadcast? Your show is coming up. Nice little cheeky hashtag there um, on the tweet <laughs> as well. But, like, this shit – I mean, you talk about an own goal – um, and, and, and I know Fulham's having a bit of a better season. They certainly haven't had a great run with the cons involved, but I mean, this was, you know, one of the all time great own goals. And I just couldn't believe it. I really had to check multiple times. Was this really him now to take a step back, <laughs> to take a step back? He is still upset clearly over the fact that he gave me one of the all time worst interviews and ignoring the fact that I have continuously praised the product ever since they launched around three years ago. It was just a bad interview, objectively a bad interview. Now, what's amazing about that interview is, you know, everyone loves to talk about, oh, he couldn't talk about this. He couldn't talk about that. Legal this, legal that. First of all, like, where's the fucking legal, right? Bingo. Where, where's, yeah, where's the we've been waiting for a while. Yeah. On yeah. That. Where's the proof? What legal? What legal are you guys talking about? You're Let's stop it there for a second. That is an excellent point. Yeah. When everything went all out, we were told nothing could be said because of legal. What legal? What's going on? Apparently, legal said, don't say anything because we're in deep shit. You're going to compare this to this and that. Like, where's the lead? What, what is this investigation that you guys keep talking about? But I just want to let you all know very clearly that I had asked Tony multiple times to come on the show. I stopped asking because I was told that, you know, he wasn't sure. I'm Nick Khan's guy. I work for BT, which is ridiculous. That's just a broadcast partner. That would be like saying to someone like Mark Ramundi that he shouldn't interview Bellator guys because he works for ESPN and UFC is on ESPN. Stupid. Anyway, I just stopped asking. They reached out to me several <laughs> months later and said, do you want to have Tony on? I was like, really? Cool. Never said, don't ask about this. Don't ask about that. You don't think I was going to ask about these things? Anyone worth their salt is going to ask about these things. There was a million different ways that you could have answered those questions. But just to let you all know, at the time, I had no relationship with anyone, like in terms of business, anything like that. This was back in early October. Well, let me stop it here because he's getting somewhat defensive. The idea that some people have that because Nick Khan was his agent, because he's appearing on a SmackDown because he's working for a broadcast partner of WWE, that somehow he was out to get Tony Khan. I mean, we played some of that audio. We played some of that original interview. Is that the way you took it? No. There, it was questions that Tony Khan was being asked that everybody wanted to know the answer to, or anybody that was interested in a anything Tony Khan had to say, that would be uppermost in their mind, and that's what he's supposed to do. And if they didn't tell him beforehand, hey, we ain't going to talk about this, or we ain't going to talk about that, and they they asked to book him on the show, then why was he not supposed to ask those things? It was the biggest news, unfortunately for AEW, that they had made. And... <laughs> And then we remember we played laughing. We played the clips on the program back then of, my God, how many more words can Tony Khan utter without saying jack all of shit? And just not... So I, I, I feel for Ariel there. 
I sympathize. Well, let's go back to Ariel Hawani. This is uh, the big takeaway here is the quote, Tony Khan has no idea what journalism is. Let's go to this. The amazing thing was, is how the whole thing spread backstage. Everyone was, you see the tweet, you see the tweet, you see the tweet. And like, I'm just a new, I've just been here for four hours. Like, I don't even know yeah. a lot of these people. <laughs> this is amazing. How could he have done, was that really him? What a, you know, blah, 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 blah. I was like, yeah, I guess it was really him. He doesn't. Let me stop you right there. The WWE locker room, whether that's wrestlers or executives or whoever it may be, that's their reaction to Tony Khan on Twitter. I, again, you know, they, they know, and, and the, a lot of the wrestlers in AEW know. Some of them haven't been out of the indies long enough, know what professionalism is, but the guys in the WWE locker room, they, for all you might say, of, and all they might say about Vince McMahon, they can't see him doing shit like that in public. And that's what you hear about Tony constantly. It, you can't. You can't take him seriously as a grown adult boss businessman when he's hugging and bouncing and lashing out and slap fighting on Twitter with, you know, various people. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's hard to think that Nick Khan's insulting him by calling him a kid when he acts like a child. Basically, that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's more of a description rather than an insult. Let's go back to this follow me but i guess it was really him and i still feel kind of bad for tony shivani that he was insulted in the process wait let me bizarre so then let go me, out let me ask i do the second here. one yes go ahead Would, wouldn't you say like the questions you were asking him in that in that ill-fated interview wouldn't that be the what journalism is wouldn't that be like the the actual proof in the pudding of like what journalism is supposed he, to be this fucking guy and then the other <laughs> is, is no idea. he wants pr he wants he he wants he, he's no different than dana you know i wanted what i thought about tweeting back to him was you know dana's not going to shag you mate because i know he's just trying to you know that should have been the one curry favor with his uh with his idol dana white you know yeah, I I, I, think I was, this was thinking a that one, but I thought it might have been a little... too much of a deep cut for the wrestling audience. You know what I mean? But <laughs> no, like he's just trying it. to do that thing, <laughs> and uh, you know, it hasn't worked, Dana, and it ain't. But by the work way, that's Tony what Khan, he should. I can assure he you should that. want that. What the, was it? To, to the point, like he's a promoter. Like that's what he should like. He shouldn't be seeking journalistic integrity. Like that's not what this program is. Anyway, um, my other thing is. Isn't it kind of wild that, like, to your point, like, you've been there four hours, all the people in the locker room are talking about it. Tony Khan is taking this shot at you. Like, it's almost like you're not even, like, part of this world. You're not, like, you're dropped into it. And it's like he's solely focused on you. He could have been watching that show, Insanity. said nothing, said anything about the wrestling. Those guys suck. These guys suck. He, it's you specifically who are not related to this at, at, in any way, um, except for this one night. It's for crazy to tweet that for him to that. Well, everyone there is obsessing over him, obsessing over uh, Ariel Hawani. But here is apparently Ariel talking about potential footage of, quote, weird and bizarre Tony Khan behavior. Let's go to this. Oh, old Ariel would have let this bother him. Old Ariel would have been down over this. Old Ariel would have been like reading this the being replies. the Tony thing. Yeah, the Tony thing. This. OK, I was not going to let this fucking guy, this guy who has built an amazing thing, all credit to him. This kid who, you know, <laughs> if it wasn't for his old man, wouldn't be, l let me tell you something. My dad gave me a lot, but as far as like MMA journalism and everything that I've built, that was all on me. That was all on me. All right. Um, I'm very proud of what I built. I wasn't going to let this guy fucking soil my name, drag it through the mud, ruin my night, Montreal, a dream, a bucket list thing. And I know he's trying to get himself over on me because Lord knows he needs it. I wasn't going to let that happen. Wasn't going to let that happen. Absolutely not. And I could tell you a lot of other stuff about that interview that we didn't show um, about how weird and bizarre that whole thing was, but I'm not going to do that. All right. <laughs> so then I'm in the car and I'm uh, thinking like, do I, I actually thought I wasn't going to reply to be honest, but then I was like, fuck it. He'll want 10, seven all day, every day. So I just throw back <laughs> that thing. 
about you know what, thanks for watching. what pushed you over the, what was the moment i don't know i was just you, i was honestly i was in the car going back home it was night i was feeling good and i was like i'm not just gonna let this slide you know what i mean no you're not just gonna yeah. call me a fraud and get away with it uh and, and honestly i felt bad for tony i felt like i needed you know shivani i felt like i needed to uh shivani, yeah. to stick oh give me a break with the defending tony shivani's honor oh come this. on that's ridiculous somebody's somebody's got to his own employer won't what are your uh what are your thoughts? I mean, there's more audio, but I don't know how much more we can go through. He thought it was fake. Everyone backstage was high fiving him. Tony does himself no favors whenever he appears in public. Either you hear the sound of his voice or you see his actions or he whatever he does, he needs someone to uh, I know he doesn't appear on television regularly, but he does the media scrums. He's out there during breaks where you see fan video of him hopping up and down on the stage or hugging people or, you know, booking matches or whatever. And it, it he needs someone to speak for the promotion as a, as a credible, respected spokesperson to make matches or do whatever that he does or host the goddamn scrum. But that, of course, won't happen because that's part of his deal. He enjoys being out there showing off his action figures to the fake journalists that he assembles at his media scrums. Let's remember, he's talking about fake journalism. There's no real journalists there. It's not fucking... Time Magazine and the Washington Post. It's the Wrestling Observer and, you know, Dick's Discount Wrestling Site or whatever. And nobody can say that they're legitimate journalist journalists. It's like Ariel Hawani talks about real sports on a real platform in a real way. So I, but anyway, that's what Tony needs to stay off the air. Either that or people need to threaten to quit breathing it. That's, that's my opinion. Well, we'll agree on that. You know, somebody ought to sue over this. Oh, we're going there. Well, I don't know. Somebody ought to sue who? Well, who, who would you sue? I'd sue my sister, Sue. Your you sister? know what she does? She sews. Sue sews? Suso, C. 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 Suso? C. Suso's. You don't, you don't remember that, for heaven's sake. My sister Sue, what does she do? She sews. She sews C. What's your name, Sai? Nevertheless. I don't want to talk about Sue. I want to talk about New. That's right. We want to talk about New Sue. That's our friend Sue New. Oh, what the hell? Just play the music and let's get into it. Call Stephen P. News. If you need to see an outlaw mud show or two. The rest. Well, I'll tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to hear about something that's going to make you so mad you're going to shit your britches, I'll tell you right now and get started ready to shit. Because again, the folks down there in Louisiana at Intergy, their big energy company down there, there was an article about it in NOLA. NOLA.com, that's New Orleans, Louisiana, to you folks who are not familiar with the Cajun country down there. NOLA.com profiled and illustrated that the Intergy leader who is retiring after all of the scandals and the way that they damaged people's lives, he leaves with $43 million worth of stock to make him feel better on these cold winter nights. Well, I'll tell you what, he better uh, he better stock up on the firewood because Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com 888-692-8084 is on the fucking case, baby. And as a matter of fact, there was a major hearing in New Orleans recently regarding certification of the class action where they are suing Intergy 
NewLawOffice.com is on behalf of 350,000 residential customers, 17,000 business customers who were without power anywhere from one to three weeks because of their negligence. They give this asshole that was running this shyster operation $43 million, but they couldn't spend a dime to reinforce the towers to withstand the 94-mile-an-hour winds from Hurricane Ida that they had promised to do the last time that they had gotten in the soup, courtesy of a hurricane, is, oh, we're going to take care of all this. Well, they gave all the money to the big wigs. And now, class action, baby. And that's all the kind of action that Stephen P. New takes is actions with class. We're going to try to find out the results of that hearing as soon as possible. But Intergy is not looking like they're going to have much energy left when Stephen P. New gets finished with them. And... On the opioid front, Brian, you always want to be in the in the loop on all of the latest opioid news. You tell me many times, if you hear anything about any opioids, let me know. Well, here you go. I don't say that. You say that all the time. I said, if you have any, I'll make sure to get rid of them. Well, you you were kind enough to offer that. Maybe we shouldn't be making jokes about this. Well, now, but in any case, on the oh, because we're not babies. We are not little babies. We're grown adults. And we know right from wrong and left from right, and that's why we use our indicators. But the people who don't know right from wrong against are, are being actively pursued by the newlawoffice.com. There's a mass litigation panel actively underway in West Virginia against 75 defendants on the opioid front. And... New Law Office is also part of a multi-district litigation against the consulting company McKinsey in San Francisco. You remember McKinsey. McK they're, they're the company that put out that bullshit sexual report years ago. What? The McKinsey report. You remember that. Talking about the elusive female orgasm and all that type of stuff. Is it elusive to you? Well, it hadn't been elusive to me. I've never had one. But I'll tell you one thing. What's the matter with you? You've never, I'm just you've never had stating a facts. Orgasm. That's right. That's right. But uh, anyway, McKenzie's going down in San Francisco. If you're going to San Francisco, be sure to wear some fucking legal protection in your hair because newlawoffice.com is coming out there and they're going to cause chaos. And they're filing cases in New York, Ohio, Tennessee, and Louisiana. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Louisiana. L.A. Los Angeles, I believe that. Is it Los Angeles or Louisiana? I don't know. On behalf of the little addicted babies in the near future, that's newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. If you want to get even with those McKinsey people out there for putting thoughts in your wife's head, all the older folks are rolling in the aisles right now at that. Uh, well, then there you go. And there you are. No, you're over there now. 